it's wonderful to be with you today. I um, am honored by seeing your faces here and your commitment to this place. Uh, thank you for coming and you know, leaving your work and, and making this a priority on this beautiful Thursday morning. I want to provide some updates to you and, uh, and start by thanking. We have been uh, grateful for the leadership of our board and leadership council and uh, alumni executive uh, committee. So thank you for your work uh, in making this place uh, possible, right, in, in supporting the institution in helping uh, move things forward here as an institution. So thank you for all of that. It has been a busy summer, uh, and actually a busy year, but I want to start with what's happened this summer to give you a sense of the pace at which we are moving. We started our, uh, our move into summer by celebrating that our baseball team, once again, were regular season champs. It doesn't get old to say that. Uh, I hope I say it every year to you. Uh, it, it's just wonderful to be so threatening to the conference. And I think this was year number six, right, Antoine, of having that distinct honor. So we're happy about that. I'm always amazed at the discipline it takes, right, to play a sport uh, and to be so excellent year after year after year. It, it starts at the top with Coach Helton, and we're just honored to have him a part of this community and a part of this team. We also spent about 30 travelers, uh, went with Mark and I across uh, to Italy, to Tuscany, to, uh, to learn uh, oh, uh, in the Tuscan area, the art, uh, the architecture, the culture. One of the things we did was take a cooking course, and I will say I have a fallback career. Um, I am really good at making you laugh, but I, I found my next thing. Uh, I'm going to make pasta. I don't, Scott, did, it wasn't your thing necessarily, but you liked it. Yeah, okay. well, I, I really got into it. I, I impressed the Italian woman. Uh, I, was, I was good at it. I can only make peachy pasta. I don't have to make any other pasta. But if you're interested, call me. We'll come over to the house. I'll make you make it with me. We'll burn the calories as we roll the pasta, and then we'll enjoy and eat like Tuscans. Um, it was a wonderful trip. We're headed to Portugal next summer, so I'll be showing off pictures of that later. But, just a wonderful trip. We also worked with uh, orientation this summer. So that's our opportunity to bring new students and their parents into the school and let them not only know about LaGrange College, but LaGrange itself. They get to know some of the restaurants and the places are out there in the hotels. They also uh, learn what it means to be a part of the Panther family. So we get to talk to them about that and get them ready to start the new year. You saw on your walk in, probably, right? We said goodbye to Henry Paul. May it rest in peace. Uh, we, the, the albatross around our neck that was Henry Paul is no more. I know there's fond memories uh, that some people have of Henry Paul. Uh, it is right now going to be a beautiful sloped hill with grass growing on it eventually. We hope, Jerry, right? <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and we will look to build in that area eventually, uh, but not right away. So we're uh, pleased by Henry Hall and going away. Most exciting by far was the launch of our aviation program. Just as a reminder for those that may not have seen all the news coverage, uh, and we are grateful to, for the media for all that they have done to cover this story from across the state, both on radio and uh, print and uh, television. But the aviation program allows our students to major in something of their choosing and have an aviation minor. And with that, they would get their private pilot's license and their commercial pilot's license. It's important that we get involved in this because of the crisis, right? Over 50% of pilots in the next 15 to 20 years will retire. And we don't plan to fly less. So we need more pilots. So we are pleased with this partnership. Please, uh, Patrick McBug County, right, and our work there. So we have, we're out of the airport. They gave us prime real estate. So when you get off your plane, you see LaGrange College right there. And we have a small classroom because we are required by the FAA to do debriefing sessions with our students. So we've got a small uh, red and black classroom out there at the airport. We're thrilled about that partnership. Now, for students in aviation for the fall, we're actually really pleased by that. This is sort of icing on the cake for us. In launching an aviation program, what we have uh, understood from our partners here on flight is that aviation students, they have thought out well in advance. There aren't hundreds of schools that do aviation, right, in the States. They know it's a limited pool. They know where they're going by the fall, and they can apply. If they can do early admittance, that's what they will have done. 
So we are thrilled that we have four students. Isabella Rocker that you see here in the cockpit is one such student who did not have LaGrange College on her radar screen, but had started doing uh, flight lessons and had fallen in love with aviation and decided that LaGrange, wow, she could get that liberal arts institution, that, that education she wanted here. And so she became a student. So we have four, and we anticipate far more. You can see up there that uh, 39, it's now well over 39. That date is about two weeks uh, old. And so we're proud of what this might mean as we in, uh, encourage more students into the field of aviation. For those that haven't seen our planes, they're branded. Now, why does it matter that it's branded? Because we're going to compete down the road in aviation uh, flight days, where the schools with aviation get together and you actually compete. Uh, it's not like acrobatic flight. <laughs> Some of you might be thinking that. But you compete all like, can you land in a certain way? Can you drop some? I don't know. It, it, it was very fascinating to me listening to it. We are going to compete, so we're going to show up, and they're going to see our panther, and they're going to play in their boots, because we're going to be so good. We also have in the Hudson Lab Science Building, we've got a huge million-dollar simulator. Now, I've had a lot of fun with this uh, a simulator to give you a sense of what it is. Okay, so it's a, you can see the two sitting down. That's the cockpit, so that's what they will be in in a Cessna. And the screen projects uh, where it is you're flying. So you load the airport. So this is actually Trick County that there you can't see. You can see the beautiful day in Trick County, but down below is Trick County. So they learn, right? And if they're going to fly to Fort Myers, they have that uh, displayed for them. Now I got kind of had some fun. John Head and I were not good together. Uh, we're trouble. So we came over and they were practicing with uh, giving a lesson to kind of show us how it would go. And so we're like, hey, how does this work? And it works a lot like a simulation doll in, you know, in nursing, if you're familiar with that, right? So you can like have the sim doll have a heart attack and you can watch how the student does. So we're like, well, can you throw a bird at it? They're like, yeah, let's throw a bird in the engine. So they threw a bird in the engine. And so can you have another plane? Oh, yeah, and we can have it like aim and dive down. Now I watched, I listened to The Daily this week, that's no longer funny. To me, if you listen to that episode about flights, <laughs> don't, don't if you're flying. So, uh, but uh, anyway, you can do all sorts of things and mimic it so that our students can get an experience on the ground here on campus and then they can go to the airport and they can get in here, right, after they've passed the simulation uh, portions of it. So it, it, it mimics as much as possible, and when we're not in the room, it'll be more realistic. They, they didn't see the steps, but we were thoroughly amused at all the simulation could do. We moved 425 students into the residence halls uh, this summer, and we uh, thank you. A number of you commented on all the signs you saw all around campus as we were getting organized and moving people in. It was a successful experience for our students and our parents. I always love that there's some parents that are uh, like, yippee, you know, and then others going, walk fast, walk fast, walk fast, don't let them see me cry. Um, <laughs> and so uh, it's a wonderful opportunity as we promise to take care of those students. We also welcomed new faculty into our ranks. Some of these spaces you might remember or you might know because they have been members of our community. Others you might start to recognize because they've joined the church choir or some other way of getting involved in the community. These faculty represent religion, sociology, psychology, business, the library, and the arts. We're thrilled to have these new faculty. I'm going to call your attention to the woman standing in the middle with the black jacket on. Uh, she is Samantha Sick. She is an accountancy professor. And one of the ways that she's already giving back to the community is that she has started a volunteer income tax assistance program here in LaGrange. So we're thrilled about what she's doing and the exposure our students will have through that program and the help that will come to people who need help with their taxes. We also welcomed in new staff, Andy Jeter, if, you're, if you'll stand, let people see who you are. I'll wait to see you here too. Um, and then Steve Kenner. Uh, Steve is director of the Panther Academic Center for Excellence. This is where our students go who might need some extra support, whether they know it or not. Sometimes they don't identify themselves as early as we might. Um, and we send them to the Panther Academic Center for Excellence to get help. Uh, maybe it's an accommodation. Maybe it's just an encouraging word, right? And somebody that can say, you can do this. And let's break down, how do you, how do you manage your time? How are you dealing with college? What, what, what priorities are you setting? 
So we're thrilled to have these two. We had other staff, but these two are, are particularly important to the life of this institution. We also welcomed a new volleyball coach, uh, Coach Schulte. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to meet him. If you are not a volleyball fan, I encourage you to come up to a game anyway because I think you'll discover that you are a volleyball fan. They are alive and electric. Uh, Coach Dan comes to us with over 40 years of coaching experience. Uh, most notably, he for nine years was head coach at Syracuse University in volleyball. He loves the D3 model, not the D1 model. So he's come to us and he's brought much experience. I got tickled with the students who were like, well, he's a little laid back. I mean, we're used to like people yelling. We're used to like, you know, this. I mean, you know, they didn't have us work that hard. And then I saw them, they had two practices that day. And I saw them after the second one. They're like, President Pastor, we take all of that back. He doesn't yell, but boy, does he work as hard. Um, we're so sore. So he's, he is, has a new and different approach to volleyball. And I couldn't be more thrilled for our students. We also put a new roof on the chapel. Uh, that's been an, a problem for us to figure out how exactly the water was coming in uh, and fixing all of that. So uh, Jerry and his team were, uh, were able to put a new roof on. Now they're raising money to fix the plaster because water and plaster don't mix well. And so now that we've solved the leaks, we need to do that. And then we need to shore up the beautiful historic windows that are in that, uh, in that, in that building. I want to take the opportunity while I talk about the chapel to point out uh, Reverend Ashley Jenkins, if you'll stand and wave. She was appointed our new campus minister. And one of the things that she has um, continued is our weekly worship services. And we're really thrilled uh, this year. It's been a more ecumenical approach to it because we have students from all faith traditions here. And in those services, uh, we've, had, we've had two so far. We took Labor Day weekend off because the students were away, of course. But we've had over 50 students come, and that's an increase that we have, that we have over our prior year. So we're really encouraged by that. As Ashley says to the students, this is the way to start your week off right, right here in chapel. And it hasn't been one demographic of student. It's been uh, football players, Greek, one fraternity showed up, it looked like, in mass uh, to one of the services with suits on. Um, and they wanted to know, look at, look at our suits, right, in our ties. And look, President Baxter, I was glad to see it. Didn't know they owned it, um, but uh, but but a male, female, athlete, non-athlete. It's just a beautiful reflection of us as a as the United States, right? Um, in that room, and um, could be more thrilled with what's happening in our uh, in that area. So, how did enrollment end up? We ended up basically flat. You may remember during COVID, we got shellacked in enrollment, right? Well, those classes are now juniors and seniors. And so as we graduate these, uh, what I call anemic classes, we will continue to grow. But we're relatively flat for this, net, for this year. But when there are <coughs> things I want to highlight that you can see above. You know, over a 9% increase in returning students, a 27% increase in our graduate enrollment. Remember, our graduate programs are in education and clinical mental health counseling. Clinical mental health counseling saw the largest increase, and we're thrilled about that because we need more counselors, right, um, out in the world. So we're thrilled about that. Uh, we have students representing 14 states and five countries. 40% of our students identify as non-white. And then we're really proud of this, that 23% of our student body, uh, or of our students <coughs> in this new class, are from True County. And we're excited about that because that didn't happen by mistake. We've been working very hard and, and deliberately with the high schools here in Troop County because we want to keep talent here and we want people to know that you have a wonderful option at LaGrange College that's affordable right here in your backyard. And so we're thrilled that that number has increased for us and we hope that it continues to increase over time. An important part of our recruiting effort this year uh, had to do with football. We had a significant change in our football uh, staffing this past year, and it put us behind the eight ball. So Wes, if you'll stand and let people meet you, uh, see you, this is Coach Dodson. Coach Dodson brought in Tony Talbert, who uh, is an assistant coach, but also a recruitment coordinator. What I want you to know about football here at LaGrange College is the conversations that, that Wes and Tony and the other coaches are having with the students has really very little to do with football. When I've sat in those uh, sessions when they've invited me in to talk to the parents in these prospective uh, visit days, the conversation is not about football. 
It's about being good men. It's about being students. It's about what's their goal in life, where they want to get. And like the fourth thing that they talk about is, well, we're going to win championships. Because if we do these things, we're going to win championships. When you're sitting awkwardly in a room, all right, and they're not talking to each other because the program hasn't started, they interrupt the silence and say, no, no, get up, because we're going to be brothers. Right? So get to know each other. Start that process now. I couldn't be more thrilled with the work the last that you have done and your coaches. Now, football starts Friday night. If you don't have plans Friday night, or even if you do, change them. Come to Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday night. What did I say? Friday night? Friday night lights. Friday night, Friday night lights. Friday night lights. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm thinking high school. Oh. Saturday night at 6 o'clock, we're going to be at Cowboy Stadium. We're going to play Barry, who's off to a really strong start. We're going to interrupt their strong start because they're going to play us. Um, we are excited about uh, what the new football season holds, and I hope that you will come out. If, if you are coming, it's a wipeout, so wear white to show your support of LaGrange College. We celebrated 10 years of the LIFT program. Uh, that picture in the middle, you see the Beesons. They are huge supporters of the LIFT program. This is a program targeting students that are first-year students. You apply and you uh, get accepted into the program. You can see uh, most of the members of the cohort staying there. They uh, go through some leadership exercises and curriculum, but most notably, they head to the mountains of North Carolina and they participate in Outward Bound, which means they leave their cell phone at base camp and they put 40 pounds on their backs and they hike up a mountain. And they live out in the wilderness. Um, you should, I had fun, sort of, with the students. I had fun. They did. As I started talking about what this wilderness might look like uh, at the dinner before they left. And they hadn't put it all together. Um, but, uh, but they did when they came back. And they, did. But, and they, they all, present pastors, they told me about it. But what they learned was they were more resilient than they ever thought they could be. Right? Because they had this, they, they were out in the, in, this was this, like, like early August when it rained and so much. They were out there, but they carried those 40 pounds. They decided what was critical, what wasn't, and they learned what to do. And these students could often become our leaders on campus. So we're thrilled with this leadership program reaching its 10th anniversary. I want to talk a little bit about the students. Natalie was in the picture before in the LIFT program. Natalie is a uh, new student from uh, with us from Peachtree City. She is a pre-biology major. I had to know about the GOAT. She was house sitting. She's a gymnast. A quite an accomplished gymnast. She is at the house city for her gymnastics coach when in the middle of the night a goat goes into labor and she gets to be a part of this goat. And so this is the newborn goat's life. I don't know if they call the goat Natalie, but they should have. Um, she's thrilled to be here and be a part of this community. She's gotten involved in everything. She's been invited to serve on social council. She's a cheerleader. You could come out and see the cheerleaders Saturday night as well, not just the football team. Parker Gonzalez stands out to me. He is also from Georgia. He is a uh, pre-engineering major, but he stands out for, and a basketball player, you can see. He stands out to me for what he's created. He and Jenna Pittman last year created an organization called Smile LC. Uh, this organization is focused on destigmatizing mental health. So last fall, you may recall, at least in the higher ed press, there were some high profile institutions where student athletes had killed themselves. And of course, then it's hard to re go a week without seeing some high profile actor or star, right, who has unfortunately killed himself. So they are interested in, in stopping that. So what I love about Parker's, here's this tall, strapping guy who sits in a room of his, of his students and says, you know, depression's real and you're not alone. Let's talk about getting counseling. Let's talk about, see, if you're struggling, let's talk about it. I don't know what Parker's going to end up doing for the rest of his life, where the road will lead him, but what I know is he's already changing lives and he's going to continue to change them. He is a perfect example of what our student body encompasses here at the college. Then there's Colin Harden. Colin is from Alabama. He wants to be a filmmaker. His parents wanted him to stay in Alabama for school. Colin didn't want to stay in Alabama because he wants film, and he knew he needed to get to Georgia. And he knew that LaGrange College had hosted a film production, right? And he wanted to be a part of that. He's a cross-country runner. He's a presidential scholar. He was able to come to LaGrange College. He has joined everything from Pride to Smile, LC to Sports Management Club. You name it, he has joined it. If 
he were here right now and we were eligible to vote, he would want you to vote for him for um, SGA Senate because he's <laughs> run. He is um, thoroughly meshed. What I love about him is this statement he wrote, I truly feel as if my input really means something. It does mean something, and I'm so glad that Colin feels that already just a few weeks in to the semester. And then there's KJ Howard. Now, KJ Howard, he did not plan on, on LaGrange College. If you had asked him in July, where is he going? He would have named a college in West Virginia. At the last moment, that college closed, and KJ didn't know what he was going to do. Now, he is from Grayson, so he's a Georgian. And I don't know why he got interested in West Virginia, but anyway, he did. Well, our coaches, some of our coaching staff, had come from this closed institution. So they reached out to KJ, and now KJ is a part of us. KJ is a man of faith, and so as I was talking to KJ's dad and, and uh, talking with KJ himself, what became clear to this family is God doesn't close one door without opening another, and that LaGrange College is where he was supposed to be all along. He's gotten so involved in campus that his name came when I said, who would we not nominate to serve on this President's Committee for DEI? His name came up because he's just gotten so involved on campus. I don't know if he has a slow button coach. Uh, I imagine he does, right? He's a county major. Uh, he is thrilled to be here and to be a part of this institution. So no matter how much they planned or thought, the world, the, the road has led them here. And here is where we want to nurture and take care of these students. And we do a lot of everything that we're doing, right, is through the strategic plan. Uh, this is a five-year strategic plan. And in five years, we want to emerge. We're it just completed year one. We want to emerge with a future that's amplified, enable a campus revitalization, engage in a student-centered approach, and ensure a community renewal. That's what we're about. So I want to share with you some of the highlights of the things that we've done this year in this plan, things that I think you'll be interested in. For those on the Leadership Council, uh, several years ago, you all worked on diversity, equity, inclusion, made a number of recommendations to us. We took that to heart, and the board in April approved a framework for a diverse, equitable, inclusive, and just community. This framework has uh, then meant that we have, we have formed a, a committee and Dr. Bryant Peterson in the back is chair of that committee because he's also the director for diversity, equity, inclusion here on campus. We, there's much work that we want to do in this area and in this space, and we're pleased that we have started with a framework for how we will, uh, how we want to be as a community. Uh, Bill and his team, Honeypot, we're thrilled for your group putting together that scavenger hunt that uh, that you referenced. This is part of our relationship, right? In strategic plan, we want a connection, particularly with downtown for our students, so that they understand it's really not that far. They can walk uh, downtown. Uh, they had to find certain things. They had to go in a store and take a, take a selfie with something or outside of the store so you can see some of those pictures. I was amazed because at 1030 in the morning, I don't think about eating ice cream, but they did. And so students <laughs> did a steady stream of business that day, as did the iced coffee uh, downtown. Uh, so they uh, purchased things, they participated for downtown, and just to have a wonderful experience. So thank you, Bill, for, and your team for making that possible for us. Another thing within the strategic plan that we're working on is looking at how we serve the students that come into us. So we have formed a, the Vice President of Academic Affairs Task Force for, on Student Academic Success. And Dr. Greg McClanahan, who many of you um, either have as a professor or know from out in the community, uh, he is chairing this committee. You know, as more and more students come into us with uh, on, on modified block or block scheduling, there's an, a chance that they have not had a foreign language, say, in two years, or they haven't had a math in a year plus because they finished it early in their high school career. What does it mean, right, for that student to come in? How do we how, how do we sequence our courses? Are our courses different in any way, knowing that there is uh, this gap between the last time the student took the course and when we took it's a very different world than when we were in high school, right? So how do we adjust as an institution? So Greg is leading a group of faculty to look at this, and I, um, it, it's a momentous thing for us to really question everything we're doing, right, in the sequencing of courses and how we're delivering things. So I'm uh, going to be thrilled next year to stand up and tell you, what did we decide to do? What did we try? 
We're also looking at shoring up our enrollment pipeline, and part of that means international partnerships. So if you are Presbyterian, you might recognize Jesus University. It's founded by the Presbyterian Church in South Korea. This is an institution that we have had conversations with about a number of different potential partnerships, but we're starting small, and we're going to, they're going to send up to eight nursing students here for a two-week rotation uh, on campus, or not, in the, at Wellstar, uh, West Georgia to have a clinical rotation. So they get a taste of US culture and they get a taste of a US hospital. We're pleased by this partnership and look forward to other avenues and how it can grow over time. We also signed an agreement with Blue Chip USA. This company is based in Scandinavia and it is targeting to bring Scandinavian students who are interested in studying in the States. We signed that agreement in the spring so we look for our first cohort of Scandinavian students to come next fall. And then we're partnering with High School Moms out of India. High School Moms is an interesting organization. It's the largest business uh, of its type in Asia with over 15 million parents and students that subscribe to their network or follow them right on social media. We've begun the introduction. I know you have much to do, but if you are on Instagram, uh, I'm now am. And, uh, and I uh, was on Instagram Live with India and answering questions about LaGrange College and what kind of place we are. Why India? It is a, uh, a democratic society that values U.S. education. And they don't have as many uh, opportunities for education there as they do in the states. And so they're interested in coming stateside for education. They're also interested in LaGrange itself. We are situated next to the industrial park, right? They, they identify that as a wonderful opportunity for internships and externships with those companies. They also love LaGrange, the quaint downtown, the thread, the safety, right? And they love the fact that we're a Christian college. Now that might strike you as odd because Christianity is right, not the predominant faith in India. But what it speaks to them is that we are a values-centered right, college and that we have morals and, and we, they, we love our students, right? And so that, that is playing well there in India. And it's true, which is a wonderful combination. So we're interested, uh, and in fact, we've got an admissions counselor that is in India who is doing the circuit and recruiting students to come. So this is a program that will grow over time and we're interested in having uh, we're, inter we're curious how many that we'll have next fall and then the following fall. Another item in our strategic plan was for us to look at our uh, branding and specifically our website. And so we launched uh, this past week our new website. The team worked really hard. It is only new on the home page as well as on the admissions and financial aid pages. We'll roll out new pages uh, over time. But we wanted to make sure that the front door of the college spoke to who we are. So it's got refreshed pictures. It's got uh, different verbiage that speaks to this generation of students. And I love this picture, don't you? And who, everybody belongs in this picture, right? This was a, a first year experience uh, event that we had. At the time, we're all trying to find who is born in our birth month. And we've got a limited amount of time, so everybody's like, 10, 1, whatever, and we're running to the different places in the gym. It speaks to this place and what we're about, right? This belonging, you on an alumni executive committee, you still feel like you belong, or you wouldn't be here, right? And what this experience meant. Another significant project for us this past year linked to the strategic plan was our campus master plan. So we looked at all of our facilities and did a, an evaluation. Green is good, yellows, uh, and red is, oh, we might have a problem. We looked at uh, and prioritized the deferred maintenance related to our residence halls, specifically looking at Boatwright, Hawks, and uh, Pitts residence halls. Those have community bathrooms. You know our students uh, don't come and house the households that share probably a bathroom with more than three people, let alone 20. How can we take that community bathroom and convert it into an experience that sort of feels more private, like health clubs have done, right? How can we work with those spaces, give them a facelift for our students? We think it will help us in recruitment, we think it will help us in retention. So the board is focused on those areas as a priority. But of course, we just took down Henry Hall, and that was a significant number of beds to lose. 
a necessary number because of its all shape. So we're looking at building townhomes. If you park across the street and walk the Gully Gateway Bridge, as you leave, uh, go out toward uh, Panther Way and you'll see stakes in the ground. That's where these townhomes would be built, okay? They might look something like this, but in the LaGrange red brick, right? Uh, and then nestled within the specimen trees on the other side of that uh, will be these duplexes where we will have opportunities for students to live. We're thinking upper class students, seniors, right? Who want an experience not having, they're not sharing, uh, it's, there's not a central hallway like we have in the apartments that we currently have. This allows the college to grow smartly over time and build the units as we need them. We also want to look at manger and convert that into a residence hall. It historically has been an academic classroom building, but with Hudson Lab Science and other spaces, we don't need that as classroom space, but we do want it as residential space because we need that. So could we create a floor plan? The design would be two small rooms with an interconnecting bathroom, allowing more privacy. Uh, you're probably not surprised, but we get requests for private rooms all the time, and we don't have them to give. So this would be intentionally laid out for uh, private students. Scott already mentioned, but one of the things in our strategic plan is to form new academic programs at the undergraduate and graduate levels. So what we're looking at, um, specifically with the manufacturing summit, is how can we uh, be a good citizen in Troop County? Are there workforce needs that our industrial park needs that we can fill that aren't being filled in other places? So we're toying with the idea, and we'll be talking more about it on September 15th, of an engineering technology degree. This is something that's not offered at Georgia Tech and Auburn. It's not offered at West Georgia Tech. It's a in-between position. It's the, it's the engineers that aren't R&D, but they help get everything off the line. So we've talked with Gerald and Thing, right, and our friends at West Georgia, how can we partner? Are there pathways that we can set up so that students can easily go into this? Uh, there is a significant need for that. But we're gathering it for this manufacturing summit to listen what other things? Is this the right thing? Or are there other things that we need to be doing to be in service to Troop County and the needs that we have here from employment that require a bachelor's degree? Right? What, what can we be doing? How can we be helping? So those are the things we've been working on in the last year connected to the strategic plan and will continue to work on this year. I want to brag for a minute about the class of 2023, 87% of that class had a job in graduate school when they crossed the stage. That's a tremendous statistic, right? Yes, we are actually clapping. Uh, we are so excited about that. Now, where did some of these members go? Well, they went to State Farm, they went to Kia, they went to uh, Gay and Joseph, they went to Major League Soccer. I want to be really clear, they're not playing Major League Soccer. <laughs> they're working in social media in New York for Major League Soccer. They did an internship, they loved them, and they beat out everybody else who just one job. The Grand Chicago, which you remind me, right, of what we do. Uh, they went to University of Georgia for graduate school. They went to Mercer Law School. They went to University of Tro uh, South Carolina. So we're thrilled about the places, and that's just a small example of where our students went. I should have also said, well, start, right, and, and various hospitals around the region, uh, including Shepherd Center. They also uh, went into school systems, both Troop County and uh, you name it, around contiguous uh, counties, they're there. We're proud also of our alumni of our other classes, right? So if you're here today, we invited, I don't know if, uh, if anyone was able to show up, but Lindsay, uh, Lane, Kaylee, yes, thank you. Right? As soon as I said that, I was like, I recognize her. Uh, Shelby and Jalen. They're excellent examples. They were in the 20 under 40 category, and we're thrilled. Thank you for being such an example of what it means to be a Panther out of this community uh, and, and giving back. 23% of our graduates stay in Troop County. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to someone who uh, lives in Troop County, and it's, it's not from, but from here, but came here for college and said, I love this place, why would I leave? And they stay. So we're pleased that we're an importer of citizens in Troop County and Grange. We're also pleased with how many teachers and nurses we have. I think it's hard pressed to have a student in a classroom in this county uh, 
or visit someone at the hospital and not run into multiple Grange College graduates. And we're pleased by that, right? That service that they, go, that they put into their profession and stay here and serve. Everything we do is about the mission of this place, right? We work hard and we're proud of that connection with our Wesleyan heritage and our full of artist tradition. We're not forgetting or leaving those things. It's who we are, even if we're talking about manufacturing or aviation. It is core and central to who we are as an institution. And you are critical to our mission as well and the application of that through the hosting of internships, your donation and scholarship funds, right? Your support and energy and effort and mentoring all of this that you do to support this college, right? We're pleased in that partnership because what it means is that we are helping together to create responsible citizens who aspire to lives of integrity and moral courage. We have a bright future ahead of us and we're gonna get there through partnership with one another. So thank you for being here today and Godspeed.